concept we're going to go over for initial entry, which is going to go to our half guard system, is controlling your opponent's hands. Okay, so not just holding the wrist, but I want to create initial contact. So what I like to do is I like to take my hands, control their palm, but also keep my thumb grip engaged. So a lot of people are grabbing like this. They're using a motorcycle grip for a lot of their grips in uh, no gi jiu-jitsu, which is fine. But I find if I engage my thumbs, it's a stronger grip and I can crush my opponent. Or if I get to the thumbs, I can squeeze their hand and make it very uncomfortable. So a lot of times I show people in class for an initial entry for the system is to grab the hands, control both hands. And I want to keep my arms to the inside of my legs, not to the outside, just in case if Avon closes the distance, he can smash pass and break my structure. So for the drill to start, just for our entry, you guys are going to keep your arms to the inside. Control your opponent's hands and thumb and using your grips to hold their hands. Right away, I'm going to throw my one leg in and establish a twister hook. Okay, so first thing I do is I throw myself back. I get a twister hook with my left leg. So if you guys come over here, you can see that I turn my foot down and I have my knee shield. I pin Adon's arm to the ground and I keep this side up because my goal is to kick my leg with my arm to sit up for an underhook, I keep my head to chest, and I now fall back with my elbow to the mat, my head to chest, and my right leg, I can't just leave it loose here because he can sit up and shin slice his leg over top of my thigh. So when I'm here with my twister hook, my underhook at his hip, not up high because he can wizard me, but again at his hip and my head to chest, I bring my other leg here, and I squeeze my legs together, and I'm blocking him now from being able to bring that leg up to shin slice. So it's very frustrating for him. When you guys sit up here at this point, your next step is to fall back, and as his feet come up in the air, take your outside leg, so look, my knee is not moved, but my foot is grabbing his foot and pulling it out, and I'm still trapping his leg, but what this does now is it causes his base to be going this way now exposing his back a little bit and causing him to react in certain ways. So if we go back again, I'm sitting here, my arms to the inside, I'm controlling Avon's hand, I'm going to throw myself to the side, so I bring one hand to the mat, I throw one arm up, and I shoot this foot through for a twister hook. So I'm here, and I'm scissoring my legs. So my right leg is pushing into his hip, my left leg is down, his hand is pinned to the mat, and I create space here with my right leg and I kick my leg through with my underhook and I scoop myself through. You can see again, I'm grabbing at the waist and not too high because a lot of guys, all they'll do here is wither you and try to drive you back down head to the mat. So I find from here, I close that space, my right leg comes in, preventing him from lifting his knee out and shin slicing. Exactly. So from here, blocking that for him. Now when I fall back, I go to my side, I'm still controlling the wrist. You can see his foot comes up in the air. I then pick his leg and I pull it out and I still keep my knees pitch. You can see there's a lot of control here and his base is dropped, he's now going this way. Okay guys, last time at full speed. Arms to the inside, grab the wrist, throw myself through, sit up, pinch, fall, and Pick his leg. Part two of the system now. So we have our entry. We're going to pull Avon through. Okay, we're pinning the hand. We're kicking up again for underhook. And now what I'm going to do is I fall back again. I'm going to pick my leg through. And I'm going to pull his leg back. But this time, as I pull his leg back, I'm going to shoot my hips into him. See now he's going over. It's very easy to sweep Avon. And as he's coming through, I have a couple options. Option one, I can go straight to side control, and I can keep pressure, squaring up. Or option two, we do that again. Our same entry is right here. I sit up, I pull him through, and as I pick, I have to time this a little bit better. As I'm picking the leg, the exact moment, I pull with my right hand, I shoot my hips through, I watch my right leg. As I'm coming up, I skip through, and I close this space now and I go to dope now. So my right hand has it moved, and my left hand right away goes under his neck here, and I'm sitting on top of his legs, shutting down his hips, and going to dope now. 
So a lot of reaction from here is for him to simply go to his back. We just go to mount. Very easy. Okay, so one more time. We go slow. You guys have your entry. Control the hands. Throw yourself back. As soon as you're here, you have to react right away. So I kick myself through. I react right away again. As soon as he's falling and I'm picking the leg, I'm already shooting my hips through. I can either square up to side control, or what I think is better is when I'm climbing here, is push my hips through, go right to dope mount, shut down the neck by pressuring uh, with my arm across the face. I keep my right hand at the last minute. A lot of times, two guys will be driving in your face. I'll let go of the hip, and I'll punch his arm across his neck. And now when we go to mount, it's a really easy setup for head and arm. Guys, now we're going to take the back from the system. So again, we're holding the hand. We're going to shoot ourselves through. You have your knee shield. This time, let's say he's pressuring us. So he's shutting down our hips and he's trying to drive us through. What I'll do at this point is I'll let go of the hand. I'll make a fist. I'll take that fist and I'll punch through right away. And let's say he's using his hand now to push my head to the mat. So as he's pushing my head to the mat, he's still dragging me down. Here, I watch his legs. It's really easy at this point to pull my right leg through. And now I take my left leg and I just simply bring it across his other leg to prevent him from sliding out or backstepping. Because a lot of guys now have leg locks, we're going to backstep and they're going to try to pull me into 411. Okay, so let's go back again. You guys are here. Throw yourself through. You're going to punch up. He's going to start to drive you down. All I do at this point is I let him do that. I keep this hand control. I keep my head flat. Patient, I'm watching his leg. As soon as I kick his leg, I spread his base, but I scissor my other leg out, preventing him from doing the back step. Now, if he keeps driving me, if you guys come over here now and watch my left arm, if he's still driving my head, I'm going to take my left arm out as fast as I can. I'm not trying to push myself up here against his force. There's too much resistance for me. What I do is I take my base away from him, and now I keep my hand on the hip, I walk away with my right leg. So my right leg is here, I walk away, and now all I do is I square up, seatbelt grip, and I throw my other hook in. I can cross my feet, I don't really care about that because I can drive his head forward if he tries to tap my ankles. Or, what I think is better for you guys, is half back. One hook in, one hook to the outside, I cross my feet, and seatbelt grip. Okay, so a standard back tape one more time. So we're here, I pull myself through, I'm gonna shoot right away, he starts to drive me to the ground. I pick his feet, I take my base away. I'm gonna walk away, dragging him in. As soon as I'm here, it's very easy to get that half back. I have my seatbelt grips, my feet are crossed, and I'm pinching the hip. Now, Little details, I like to take my choking hand, which is this one here, and I like to hide it with my underside. Because if he picks that underside grip, it's very easy for me to thread the neck. So one more time, you guys land here, you get your half back, I take my underside over my choking hand. I let him do that, take that hand, then take my other hand through for the choke. So next part of the back take, we're going to do the same thing we did. We pull ourselves through. I'm going to kick through right away. This time, I'm just going to stay up tall. Same idea as before. He's going to start pressuring me, but this time, I'm not breaking my structure. As I fall through now, I'm going to cup his triceps. So you guys come to this side. I'm falling back. So as my head comes out, I'm going to keep my hand on his tricep. As I fall through now, my outside arm is going over his neck and the arm that was cupping the tricep is going to grab his palm. And you can see my initial twister hook has not moved. That's the first leg we threw in when we did the entry. Why I keep that one in is it controls Avon's leg. So this arm going over his neck is better than falling to the pillow because from here I have far more control. I'm controlling his palm. I take my head to the side where my choking hand is. If I leave it here, it's easier for him to get his back to the mat. And I can't really choke him. But if I'm here, he can't bring his, hand, his back to the mat. And if he turns into me, well, I have control. There's not a lot he can do. The reason I'm controlling his palm as well 
is it's easier for me to take his hand, drive it to his chest, and keep him in one spot. This leg here, I don't really worry about the hook. A lot of times what will happen is they'll throw this leg up to try to get out. I can control them even more. So one more time, this is far better than the first one. Because if I'm here, I control, we throw ourselves through, I sit up, I pull myself out right away. I control his elbow. As I walk away, you can see I'm already going over his neck. I'm taking my head right on the hand. I control his palm. The twister hook's here. I don't care about this hook. This one's fine. I just use it to walk around or to control the hip. If I really need to, I can throw it over or under to control his leg. Now from here, very easy to finish the submission. My head goes on my hand. I control his hand here. I'll pull him up. Take my hand to bicep, and my other hand is a knife hand, my palm to the back of his head. And from here, I'm not just squeezing, I'm taking my right arm and I'm pulling away from him as I'm lifting up into his neck for the submission. Okay, guys, last time. I control the hand, I fall, I kick myself up high, I can beat him to the punch, clear myself out of the way. As I walk away, I'm jumping to the neck and using my hips and lifting them up. That's why I keep that leg free to walk and lift my hips. My chin goes right to my head. I control here. So now if anyone tries to get out and walk his back to the mat, it's very difficult. Yes, he can roll away like he just did, but if he rolls away this way, I can just get my hooks in, bring him back, and I can lift him again to keep him flat. And from here, all we're doing is controlling Pinning my head to my hand, squeezing my arm in and pulling back, one arm choke, or I can let go, hand to bicep, and I take this hand away from his arm. So if I'm here and I go to pull back, he's going to grab that arm. He's going to control it. Now I have to fight this. So if I'm here and I'm controlling that palm, and I want to now connect my hand to my bicep, I'm going to go away from him, here, behind his head. Now I'm not just pulling into him, I'm taking my choking arm away towards his right side and I'm rotating and squeezing. 